Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're actually not going to be talking about flowers although this is the most beautiful little sunflower relative. This is the flower on the top of a Jerusalem artichoke plant. Jerusalem artichokes are one of those plants that unless you grow them yourself you're ever, never really likely to taste them at their best. They don't keep particularly well, uh, they don't transport wildly well, and they tend to go soft quite quickly. They are simplicity itself to grow. You plant them into quite well manured ground and then you leave them. They like quite a lot of sun. Uh, mine at the moment are suffering badly. They've just been knocked to the ground in uh, a huge storm that we had in the last two or three days. But they will normally grow six to eight feet tall. And you pop them in as the small tubers. Those were planted into the end of this bed. And be very careful where you choose to plant them because when you come to harvest them, you will never ever get them all out. So wherever they go, you're gonna have Jerusalem artichokes for a long time. One of the best uses I've seen of this is my mom planted it on the sunny side of her greenhouse. And what it does there is it grows up during the spring and summer and creates the most wonderful natural uh, sunscreen for one side of her greenhouse. Um, and you just more or less leave them, they are hassle-free, they get very few pests and diseases and from about November time once all this foliage has died down with the first frost I mean cleared away you clear away all of this foliage into the compost heap we'll be digging these up. Now we're here in December and the most useful tool I've found for cropping most things are these thermal gloves they're brilliant they're only about five or each and uh, saves you all sorts of trouble with your hands. And we're going to crop our Jerusalem artichokes. I've been growing in this bed now most of the year, giving me no problem whatsoever. And all the tops have now died back with the frost. And you're left with this sort of quite tough stalks. What I tend to do at this point is crop all these off and burn them. You can use the potash from your bonfire and it gets rid of any diseases or pests that could be lurking. And as it sort of grows in the same place for me, all the time, you don't want to give yourself ongoing problems. Now, they are the easiest things to crop. You're going to crop them just like ochre or potatoes. Slide your fork in a few inches away from the plant, jiggle it around, and the tubers will pop to the surface. Um, the tubers themselves can be anything from sort of an inch long to about seven inches long. And they're quite easy to clean, really. I never, ever peel mine. Uh, as you can see, if you just give them a quick rub, a lot of the dirt will come off them. And what I do to clean them is take them to the kitchen and then just use one of those metal pan scrubbers, obviously not a Brillo because you don't want to uh, cover them in soap, and that will clean the actual tuber perfectly so that you actually can then start to use it. And as you can see, the, the big ones are the ones that we're actually going to use to cook with. But these small ones here, don't throw those away. Those can go back into your bed. You could make a new bed of them using those. If you're going to keep your own, I found the best thing to do is to keep them in some slightly damp peat so that they don't shrivel. When you buy them sort of from a garden centre or somewhere, you'll find they do look quite shriveled. And I normally sort of have soaked them for a couple of hours in water to sort of get them coming back. And dead easy. One of the simplest things you can grow. They make a great hearty soup at this time of the year in the winter. It's brilliant. For some people it does induce a bit of wind, um, so I wouldn't use them on people that you don't know very well. Or in fact you could use them on people that you do know very well because it can be quite entertaining. They are easy, simple, taste really, really delicious and exotic. They make a fantastic risotto using goat's cheese. I can't recommend them highly enough this time of the year when mainly you're getting greens out of your garden or parsnips it makes a really different change in 2000 and 